Some gangster is out there flying a plane around, drawing cue for quail. So yeah, it's quail day, guys. Okay, start off with the all-carbon CCXR. I don't know if this is a different one from the one we saw in the parking garage. Same spec, but there was another one on a trailer back at Polo Field. So it could be just two identical CCXRs, which is pretty crazy. That same wire roadster back there, I think we've seen that like three times now. So won't stop too much. I'm sure there's a lot of other cool things we haven't seen in the parking lot yet at the Quail because as we know, it's basically a show in itself here at the Quail parking. So let's see what we can find. Look at this one. This is sort of a Dakar tribute, 911, carbon fiber, wide body fender flip. It's absolutely jacked up. This is like the OG 911 Dakar basically. The big fans in the back get more carbon fiber. Oh, look at that. He's got like a Nike racing helmet inside. The quick release steering wheel, man, that thing's nuts. Check it out from the front. It's got the Air Jordan logo on the front. The Hype Beast Off Road 911 Dakar. Oh, yes, my friends. Got the old Koenig Specials Mercedes. So, yeah, the original basically supercar and luxury car modifier. You get all these weird little gills and everything. You get sort of like a 190E Evo style wing at the back, too. Check it out. And yeah, the whole body has sort of been stretched out to make it a quasi-wide body. It's really, really cool looking. Good, good row of cars here. We've got the Ford GT and the classic white and blue. Look at that, sort of like an acid green 765 LT back there. That's actually quite nice. And then look at this, a Pure Sport we haven't seen yet finished in orange. I think this is a Canadian car, actually, that's been rolling around Monterey. Seen pictures of it, but now we get to see it up close so the orange is pretty damn nice actually um unlike the yellow and red ones we've seen it's not like the two-tone it's pretty much all orange just with some black accents on it pretty nice and then look at this matte like frozen blue veron 16.4 on the hre wheel so modified veron always interesting to see and then over there look at that green p1 also on hre wheels so pretty bold modifying your hypercars like this but it's just wheels so no biggie i guess and wire bc roadster i don't know if we've seen this one yet i don't know we've seen a lot of cars guys so it's kind of hard to keep track of all of them but nice spec white with the blue accents some dark blue tinted carbon fiber on top and nice white and blue interior there really nice and then we get another back look there the green p1 the blue veron 16.4 and we've got the orange Chiron Pur Sport there. Nice little hypercar lineup. And this wire looks a little different because it does have the Tempesta package on it. So it adds those little front splitters, the canards. I think this is like a Tempesta 2.0 pack because the rear wing is quite different on it. I don't think I've seen this on other wire Tempestas before. So I believe this might be sort of like a Tempesta Evo package or like sort of a 2.0. Uh, looks kind of interesting, a little different. The new off-road Huracan Strato, and he's optioned the roof box on it, going for the full look. That's pretty sick. Look at this modified McLaren 720S here. It's got like a Senna GTR style kit on it. It's all carbon fiber. That uh, is pretty cool, actually. Look at this crazy double wing. So he's got the factory mounted active aero wing, and then this huge like bumper mounted rear GT wing. That's pretty nuts. The modified R8, and then we've got a silky clean Carrera GT over here, finished in black. That is just looking so good under the sun, the yellow brakes. Classic, classic look. Got the Hennessy boys stacked up here, the Venom F5 Revolution. So I think that adds just a bit of a more extreme kit to it. You can see the rear wing on there, the roof intake, front splitter and the canards at the front. I don't know if it's like a track only or not, or maybe sort of like just a wire BC to a regular wire or not. And then there's the standard. Venom F5 back there. I gotta say the design's pretty good on this car. Like, um, I think it's a pretty good improvement over the old Venom GT. That was basically based on a Lotus. This looks more like its own unique design, the Venom F5. It's pretty cool. And obviously like stupid fast, which is what Hennessy is best known for. But yeah, we were driving behind one of these. Sounds really good, looks really good. Quite like it actually. Okay guys, we're just entering the quail now. So I'll be honest, we did arrive a little later than anticipated, so I will be speed running 
pretty much the whole event, getting all the cars as much as of them as I can. So let's just dive right into it and I'll show you guys all the reveals, all the classics that are on display. It's a pretty cool event as always. Let's get to it. Look at that up at the quail here. The Koenigsegg stand, the first production Gamera, the crazy two-door, four-door mega saloon. 2,000 plus horsepower and eight cup holders. Absolutely insane. This is like the final production model. I think the ones they released before are just prototypes, but this is the final production variant of the insane Prince of Camara. This is what will be going out to the customers very shortly, I would assume. Let's have a quick look at the interior there. And what's amazing is just how big the door is on the Camara. It's quite a unique car, that is for sure. There it goes. The dihedral Koenigsegg door, pretty classic. Nice. So this is the new evolution of the Singer DLS lineage. This is the turbo study. So they've done a turbo study before, but now they've given it the crazy DLS wide body treatment. You can just see how massive those rear fender flares are at the back of this 911. Everything's just so flush on the Singers. It's so cleanly done. They've got their exposed modified engine at the back with the exhaust and everything sticking out. Just stunning work again from Singer. Never really gets too old. Every time they come out with something, it is a banger. The crazy Hispano Suiza Spanish hybrid car. Sort of like a Grand Tour though. It's quite large, but it's a full carbon fiber body. 1100 plus horsepower, 1600 kilos, and I think it's fully electric. It's got the 400 kilometer range for this particular car. Don't really know too much about the Hispano Suizas to be honest, but it's uh, very, very different looking. Yeah, so have a look at the fastback styling on this thing. So Hispano Suiza, it turns out, is a very old company from the early 1900s that's sort of been revived, and now they're making these just crazy, crazy, unique, super touring sort of hypercars, a mixture of both. This is the Boulogne. They're only making five of them, and they're absolutely ridiculous looking. I must say it's quite unique and different from all the other cars here at the Quail. So big points for the uniqueness and the styling points on the Hispano Suiza Boulogne. This one's absolutely mega. We did see this last year at the Quail, but I think this is more of a production variant now. It's got some MSO bits on it. This is the McLaren Solus GT, which is absolutely insane. So McLaren pretty much for all of their cars in the modern era have been using pretty much the same twin turbo V8 power plant. But this particular Solus GT uses a Judd V10, producing 829 horsepower, has 12 100 downforce at 150 miles per hour. It's totally bonkers, this car. I just love this sort of volcano orange paint they're displaying it into. But yeah, it's single seater, and you may recognize this car from this year's Goodwood Festival of Speed. I do believe it's at the hill climb best time of the entire event. It's absolutely mega, and you can see where the lines are just on the cockpit there. It's got that canopy opening mechanism on it. It is a bonkers, bonkers car. Here is a new world debut, the Maserati MC Extrema. This thing is absolutely bananas based on the MC20. It uses the same twin turbo V6 power plant, except it's been upgraded to 700 plus horsepower. It's also track only, and only 62 units are being built of the car. But you can see it's so much different looking from the MC20. The wheels, the mirrors, everything. Look at this entire, this huge roof intake, the giant rear wing on it, the big shark fin, very a la the Mon prototype. And take a look at the back, we've got these absolute cannons back here over that big rear diffuser. It's mega looking. So yeah, it's track only. I would hope that some of the owners actually do get this thing out on the track because it looks absolutely bananas. It needs to be taken out. Yeah, that is the world debut of the MC Extrema here in Maserati. Then next to it, I get around to the front. Have a look at this. This looks to be like the new Gran Turismo facelift. They've got this like almost like a stainless steel look to it. It's all chrome. Absolutely ridiculous looking. And it's got all these little indents in it. Not really sure what these are for. It almost looks like a cheese grater or some kind of thing. Um, interesting. It's got some sort of special edition. 
I'm not even going to try and pronounce that Italian because an Italian will call me out on butchering the name. But uh, yeah, like a stainless steel looking Gran Turismo beside the bonkers MC Extrema here at Maserati. This is the Bugatti Chiron Super Sports Legend Edition. Have a look at how amazing this is. So black and gold faded paint. But then this is the winner right here. This whole design, I hand painted all the different Bugatti models. You can see the likes of La Voiture Noir, the Chiron, the Cento DHC, the EB110, all hand painted on the side of the car. Absolutely incredible, especially against that gold backdrop. And then you can sort of see inside through the side of the door that they've got some of the classic models painted into the inside of the door. It's just incredible, this machine. I mean, Sharon Super Sport is already cool enough on its own, but then just having that hand painted Bugatti artwork on the side is just mega. It just makes it a little bit cooler than all the rest of the Chiron Super Sports we have seen during Monterey Car Week. And we shift around to the other side of the Chiron Super Sport Legend Edition. We had all the new cars on the other side, and then we've got all the classic cars on this side, like the Type 57 SC Atlantic, Type 35. It's just so cool. And then just a better look under the light here at that fade from the black to the gold with the hand painted artwork on the side of the car. It's just remarkable. And another gold Bugatti. We've got the gold Mistral, a car that debuted at Monterey Car Week and the Quail last year. And now we've just got a new spec basically. So, again, the same kind of gold that's on the Legend Edition here on Super Sport and just pops so well on the Mistral. The open top Bugatti, or I believe it's 40, the final production number on them. Uh, this looks so damn good. I'll get around to the back again and show you guys another angle of it. Just to look at the back of the Mistral. I do quite like the X-shaped tail lights, which out blends with the rear bumper, and then having Bugatti spelt out with the LEDs at the back. And of course, it's still got the classic Bugatti W16 powering it. We've got a special edition Remac in the very here at the Remac booth. This one is the Time Attack edition, so it comes in this black and green paint scheme here. Those are quite striking with the carbon fiber accents on it, so this is to celebrate a new record that Remac has set. They just set a Nürburgring lap time record. I think it's like a seven minute, five second lap time. And I do believe it's the fastest electric car yet. So pretty mega and they're celebrating it with a special edition. Um, not sure how many they are making of this, but it is pretty cool nonetheless. It's a huge achievement for Remac. Obviously it's still a pretty new brand. So to go out and set a lap record like that at the Nürburgring is quite the statement. And the black and green is a really striking livery too, actually. I don't know what you guys think about that. But I think it looks quite cool. New hypercar display here at the Zenvo booth. Now we have the brand new Aurora, which is available in two different specs. The first one we're looking at here is the Tour. So this is more of a road going variant. It's a lot more streamlined for just, yeah, racking up highway miles, things like that. A lot more, you know, drivable for daily use. Now the cool thing about the Aurora is that it's two different power plants. So they're both V12s, but you can get two extra electric motors if you would like to bump it up from 1,450 horsepower to 1800 horsepower, which is totally insane. And the fact that we're still getting V12s in this day and age, even if they are hybrids, is pretty special. We had a quick look at the interior. You can get up close to it. Again, quite nice. It's pretty simple, which I do like. It's just really the outside that is the best looking part of the Zenvo for me. Such a cool car. They're quite known for their outlandish design, especially the TSRS with its tilty wing. But the Aurora does seem a lot more streamlined. And, so, and then this is the Agile variant. So while the Tour goes for more of that streamlined look, this is definitely more of a track-focused racer. So you can see it adds this rear wing at the back, a lot more aero. It's got the exposed suspension back here, it's the big old Olin shocks. It's got this forged carbon fiber bits there too. So not really sure, it could be a much lighter than the Tour, I'm not really sure, but it's definitely got more of that track look to it. Again, with this design, it's really cool. It's just behind the front wheels here. It's got a lot of Valkyrie styling to it. That's how you can see through the wheel arches there. Again, with the exposed linkage on it, so cool. There's the 
all started up. We've got coops and roadsters, all the different specs. Pretty cool display, and they've got it set up here at Hennessy. Yeah, we're getting some cheers there. <laughs> that was some pretty nice revving we got there from Hennessy. But um, yeah, I think we looked at a couple of Venom F5s like that in the parking lot there. We've seen a few jobbing around Monterey Car Week too. Seems to be quite a popular car at this year's Monterey Car Week, the Venom F5. And I must say, again, it does look quite cool. So nice to see them. The Lotus booth, we've got the Lotus Avaya. So I think customer cars have just started to be delivered for this. It's Lotus's new all electric 2000 brake horsepower hybrid car. It's a pretty radical design, too. This one is particularly special because the customer who has bought this one is none other than Jensen Button, 2009 Formula One world champion. As you can tell by the livery here, these white, sort of like ash and green accents, paying homage to his Braun GP car that he won the championship with back in 2009. It's even got his number 22 on the side there. And then have a look at the interior. The tiny little steering wheel. And I just love those center buttons in there. It's like a honeycomb of, almost. It's so good looking. He's got his 22 printed on inside the door too. Uh, have a look at the back though, where I think the most important part of the Avaya design is. The most striking part of the Lotus Avaya design for me is definitely the, the rear end. We've got these huge holes cut into the back for maximum airflow and the rear taillight design is actually just a line of LEDs circling it. Got the active rear wing back here. And look at that. You see all of the exposed suspension. They're built by Multimatic, Canadian company, very close to my home in Toronto. But yeah, it's such a cool looking car. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it's fully electric, 2,000 horsepower, so uh, pretty damn fast. And yeah, the classic Jensen Button bronze GP livery, such a nice touch. Okay, we have a couple of Lanzanza McLaren P1s on display here. I start off with the P1 HDK, so essentially like a road going P1 GTR. Now it's paying homage to a kit that you could buy for the McLaren F1 back in the day, obviously. HDK standing for high downforce. So we're adding this big old rear wing to it. Um, the back, you can see, is totally, totally redesigned to look like the P1 GTR, but they've done some modifications to it to make it road legal. It's a $1 million kit. Um, I personally would say it's money well spent. I would, I mean, don't have a P1, but if I had a P1, I think this would definitely be an option for me. It's such a great looking design. Lanzante is a legendary company too. If you guys don't know, they did a lot of work on the racing McLaren F1s back in the day. And now they're here making the same modifications to P1s. This one over here is the GTR 18. Finished in pretty iconic golf livery. So yeah, you can see the louvers, the mirrors, the rear wing on the HDK and the GTR are pretty similar. Just a few changes being made to the two cars to make the HDK road legal. This particular GTR also has a long tail at the back, so you can see just a little bit longer than the HDK over here. But um, they're both so good looking. And yeah, Lanzante just going all out on this. Another difference down here, got the quad exhaust on the GTR long tail, where we just got the two cannons at the back of the HDK. So, I don't know, get the track version, get the street version, what do you guys think? Million dollars well spent on the HDK or not? Okay, back at another booth we saw last year here at the Quail. So this is a special edition of the 21C from Zinger. This one is called the Blackbird. So from what I can see, it's added a bit more arrow to it and looks like it's a little more track focused. I mean, I would say they are all track focused, but this one is just a little more extreme with this big old front splitter on it. These huge canards and then that's the funnest parts of the Zinger 21C for me is that massive door that opens on the side. And then if we look in here, it's got this really interesting two seat setup where the passenger is actually sitting behind the driver. It's basically all carbon fiber underneath, so incredibly lightweight. Um, I do think that Zinger is trying to set a lot of track lap records, so better keep an eye out for the Blackbird and see what it can do on different tracks. See if they take it to the Nürburgring and any others they might challenge, but it's pretty radical looking, quite cool I must say. 
Look at this bad boy. Not only the manufacturer display, but we've got the McLaren Senna GTR here at the Quail, finished in the classic, iconic Marlboro livery, very famous from the classic Formula One cars from the old McLaren teams. And yeah, it is road legal too, which is the coolest part. I think we will probably be seeing more of this in the later days here at Monterey Car Week as it should be at some more events driving on the road. But have a look at that. It's just so much more extreme from the standard stand, which is already pretty wild looking. Of course, McLaren built that with the idea of function over form. But then the GTR just went and took that to another level. And it's cool that guys are making them street legal too because this probably has a lot of road presence so i'd be very very much looking forward to seeing it on the road but even just sitting here on the grass at the quail is pretty damn epic look at that the urban bamboo pts gt2 rs rolling out i believe that color is worth you know a couple hundred thousand dollars <laughs> driving action for the Senate GTR, hopefully on the last we've seen of this crazy beast here at Monterey Car Week. We've got the Lamborghini Lanzador electric concept that just debuted here at the Quail. So looks like sort of a two-door, like futuristic Urus almost, but it's got two plus two seating. Um, the interesting thing about this, well, as I mentioned, it's all electric. So I think it's their second all electric concept. The Terzo Millennial was the first. This has one megawatt of power apparently, which is the equivalent to about 1300 horsepower. So um, be pretty damn fast despite being an electric SUV. Oh, hold on a second. There goes the Jaguar. XR15. Yeah, so we just walked around to the back of the Lanzador. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sounds like a Pokemon or something. Um, but have a look at this. These little flaps up top here, just on either side of the rear windshield, have the ALA marking on them, which is like Lamborghini's new modern aero that they have on cars like the STO and the SVJ. Another thing to note here, look at the poke from the rear tires, or the wheel arches. That's pretty cool, actually. Got this big old diffuser. And it's got like sort of mini Countach rear taillights. So um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, they did mention that this won't be on sale until around like 2028 is the target. We have lots of carbon fiber on it. I'll see if we can maybe get a quick look at the interior. But what do you guys think of this Lanzador concept uh, from Lamborghini? Not their traditional supercar styling, but uh, definitely supercar power with the one megawatt or 1300 horsepower. There's inside the Lamborghini Lanzador. Pretty remarkable interior, definitely very futuristic looking. Still has that essence of Lamborghini though. How about a look at the dial there? Very airplane like. Big paddle shifters and the two plus two seating. The seats are quite striking looking. How cool is that? <laughs> so we've got the Revuelto and the Huracan Strato. Just being taken off of the Lamborghini stage. The Revelto is one we have not seen before, so might as well get up close to it. You can see a lot of styling cues in some of the previous limited run Lamborghinis, like the Sion. You can definitely see sticking out in the headlights. I've noticed that as a theme with Lamborghinis when their new flagship car comes out. They generally take design cues from previous special editions. The Sesto Elemento kind of looked like the Huracan. The Aventura had some Reventon styling to it. Oh, a little SLR roaster heading out behind us. Yeah, back to the Revuelto. So yeah, it is the successor to the very famous Aventador. Kind of sad to see the Aventador going. It's a pretty iconic car, but the Revuelto is pretty cool looking. The big thing that stands out for me are these cannons they have for exhaust at the end. And then we just have a look at the interior here. Still pretty distinctly Lamborghini. The styling has that fighter jet look to it the paddles look at how big they are fully carbon fiber of course and this is a hybrid v12 too 
So another first four Lamborghini in their flagship line. And yeah, we've got the off-road Huracan Storato there as well. So at the Pin and Farina booth, shouts out to these guys. I think this is probably one of the most impressive booths here just because these are three new cars they've debuted all at once pretty much. Um, obviously the Batista is not a new car, but this is a new special edition, the Nino Farina edition. So you get this special livery and Nino Farina of course is the first Formula One world champion from back in 1950. He's also, I believe, the nephew, I think it's the nephew of Batista Farina. So yeah, obviously um, a huge link with the Pin Farina family right there. Nino Farina, pretty legendary Formula One driver and obviously gets a car named after him as he should. Next up here we have a brand, brand new car, the Pure Vision Design Concept. So I'm not sure if this is like a working car. It might just be a shell because um, they don't have any power figures for it or anything, but this would be Pininfarina's vision of an electric high-performance SUV. So yeah, it looks like it's just a four-seater, four doors. Um, it's a pretty striking design though, and I guess this is where Pininfarina sort of sees their company maybe heading towards in the future, I'm sure it would pump out a ridiculous amount of power and everybody's building SUVs these days. But um, as you can see, just a little bit different from the current Batista, which is rolling out to customers now, the 1900 horsepower EV hypercar. And then that is where Panfarina could be heading in the future with the Pure Vision concept. Okay, last up at the Pin and Farina booth, another world debut here at the Quail. I'm saving the coolest one for last, the B95, an open top Hyper GT electric speedster. So Pin and Farina claim the 0 to 16, under two seconds, 300 km an hour, top speed, and just a ridiculous looking design. It has a bit of a Ferrari design element to it actually, which is not really surprising, Ferrari's link to Pin and Farina, but um, have a look at the interior. The seats that they've debuted on this thing are quite, quite cool. So that hound's tooth design. And yeah, it's a speedster, so no windshield, just that well, tiny little stone guard. So obviously, we have to wear a helmet or something, which they've got in the cockpit there. But yeah, again, hypercar that is electric only. That is sort of Pin and Farina's design philosophy in this modern era but man does it ever look really really cool this would go toe to toe with the likes of the monza and the elva in my opinion and even the sterling moss because this design they've done on the b95 is absolutely beautiful that is one thing i will say about these new pin and Farina cars they look absolutely gorgeous at the Gordon Murray booth. So we saw the T50 and the T33 Spider back on Monday at Tampa. This is one that we have never seen before though. The T50S, I believe, this is the first experimental prototype of it that has just debuted. And it's named after Niki Lauda, obviously. Very legendary, three-time Formula One world champion. Um, if you don't know too much about F1, just go and watch the movie Rush, it's fantastic. Uh, Niki Lauda, just a legendary driver. So nice that they paid tribute to him with this incredible car so yeah it still has that any Cosworth v12 that screams to 12,000 rpm there's the bad boy right there looking nice and pretty just nuts looking that's what's powering this bad boy right here the t50s nikki Lauda. so obviously the track only version it's still got that glorious ground effect fan at the back but it's added this huge rear wing which the regular t50 does not have so obviously the fan providing a ton of downforce and the wing just making it even more extreme that shark fin is a nice little touch too got that huge roof snorkel on top bringing a lot of air into that rear engine setup but my goodness I, I can't get enough of these Gordon Murray cars they're absolutely fantastic looking and then just to head back to the front again as I try not to trip down the stairs here that I'm stepping down you can just see again a couple different more touches at the front the big carbon fiber front splitter the canards my 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 so nice I believe the five spokes are unique to the TVS Nikki Lauda as well incredible car yeah, we have the Ferrari F50 in this custom racing livery and look at this gun and painted the wheels white. That's pretty bold but it looks so good. I'm a huge fan of white wheels 
plan. I think it pops really well against the red. And right beside that, look at this monster, the MC-12 version Corsa. So a track-only version of the MC-12. Obviously, you can see it looks so much different from the standard road-going MC-12. Got the uh, yellow headlights that really pop out, those big raised louvers, the huge GT wing at the back. So it's pretty much the same as the MC-12 GT1. Um, but I think this is just a track of day special. I don't know if they actually raced the Corsa. I believe it's the GT1 is the one that got raced. Now, I don't know if you can make these road legal or not. It would be cool if somebody did try to do that. But uh, nevertheless, quite cool to see that there. I think it's a bit longer than the standard MC12 as well. I think the Pagani booth is quite special this year because we've got the new Utopia, the first like new model Pagani in many many years. I think in 11 years, I think it's 2012, the Wyra debut. The Utopia is so cool to me because I think it combines elements of both the Wyra and the Zonda design. It's cool. It still keeps the leather straps on the outside. Very Pagani-like. Um, this is a really unique and special car because they're sticking with the V12 power plant. They went back to a manual gearbox. We're gonna have a look at the interior in a second, but um, yeah, it's so unique. I love, love, love this new Utopia. So let's have a closer look at it. You see the back of the Utopia. I think this looks uh, a lot more Zonda-like, while the front looks more Wyra-like. Big thing to me is just the uh, angle of the rear bumper here definitely screams Zonda. And I do love this new rear taillight design though they've done the Utopia. Still keeps that classic circular quad exhaust setup too. Pretty iconic to Pagani's at this point. The new wheels are very good looking and I want to get up close to the interior now. Yeah, have a look at the interior here of the Utopia. It's pretty cool because while a lot of companies are trying to go electric and make everything futuristic, Pagani has gone back to more of an analog style. So you can see the little manual sequential setup with the paddles there on the steering wheel and you can see all the little buttons. There's no screens or anything like that in the center. It's all just buttons and dials. It's so cool looking. Just a very classy look to it. Even the seats sort of have a classic styling to them. Utopia is such a winner in my book, and this is my first time seeing it in person. I was already in love with it from pictures I saw online. Now seeing it in person only justifies it. It's a beautiful looking car, the Pagani Utopia. Now we've got the predecessor to the Utopia here, the original Wyra which is still looking very nice today, cleaning up nicely here at the Pagani booth. I'm going to shift over here where we've got the Zonda C12, the one that started it all, debuted back in 1999. This is the S, so I believe it is upgraded from the original C12. This was always the cool thing to me though, was the split wing design on the original Zonda. It's something that hasn't really been replicated, but something that is definitely a big standout for me from the original Zonda. We've got one of the production Bugatti Chenzo G, one of 10, pays tribute to the original 1990s EB110. Put the sign in the way a little bit, so kind of hard to look at it. Classic Ferrari 250 Testarossa coming up here, obviously just worth tens of millions of dollars. Not a bad little setup here. Yeah, the back of the Cento DHG is probably the most interesting part for me. It does have the Chiron Super Sport, the double stacked exhaust. I really like this rear tail light design. The wing is quite nice. And then this, what stands out to me the most, is these little side circular ventilations on the side that obviously pays homage to the ED110, which the whole car is paying tribute to now. I do believe these were selling for about $10 million new. <laughs> So um, it's a pretty penny. I'm sure they are all accounted for, but only 10 of these Chento DHEs, so pretty cool that we've got one sitting here. How's that for a roll out? The 40th anniversary of Mercy and the Diablo GT behind it. Diablo. And look what's coming up towards us. That, we did not make it over to in time, but it's passing us now. The new Porsche Boxster Spider RS. So a convertible GT4 RS. I don't know how we feel about that kind of a strange car to make, but there it is. Get a little bit of a rev out of it. So it goes past the Gordon Murray T50. So a lot of cars are starting to clear out here at the Quail. Yeah. <laughs> 
concept S, one of one. It's got the split cockpit there. So yeah, Gallardo underneath obviously, but very, very unique I mean, that's pretty cool. This was a huge surprise reveal here at the Quail, the Mustang GTD. Absolutely ballistic. It's pretty much a road legal Mustang GT3 car based on the new generation Mustang, except this one is quite different. 800 horsepower and it's uh, it's going to cost you a pretty penny, 300,000 US dollars. But um, obviously you can see it's quite, quite different from any standard Mustang, even from the Dark Horse or the Shelby. But just take a look at the back. I love this. Look at that. The rear wing, it's not even mounted onto the trunk. It's just on either side of the rear window there. The mount's sticking out. Absolutely bonkers looking. Just another look at the back here with this rear wing. And it's got huge, huge Akropovich exhaust sticking through that rear diffuser. So I'm not sure how many of these they will be building. But again, this was a really nice surprise. The Mustang GTD. We got another Bugatti Cento DHC. So we saw the one before. Here is a second one that's 20% of all the Cento DHCs, as there's only 10 of them. And what's fitting with this one, as I mentioned before, it's paying tribute to the old Bugatti EB110. And this is a livery that was used on one of the GT1 variants of the EB110. So that is super cool. I think this stands out really well in this sort of like French racing blue, too. Really, really makes the lines of the Cento DHC pop. It's obviously so much different looking from a Chiron or a Devo or anything of those likes. Very, very cool. seven-sevens rolling out here black white and of course only 77 of these ever built so to have five of them all together be remarkable and there's our last two left just waiting to be pulled out here at the quail silver and black uh yeah just again iconic iconic car from aston martin and a design that just never gets sold we saw those two roll out and or three roll out sorry there's two left here silver and black sorry it's been a long long day of covering these cars but uh we're getting the last few here at our full quail coverage It'd be absolutely crazy to not point out Suki's S2000 from Too Fast, Too Furious. I think it's the actual movie used car, but it's still got the original pink livery on it. The white fuzzy seats. Oh my goodness, look at the Panasonic screen that had that little anime character like, I don't know, sort of like during when she was driving in the original race at the start of the movie. But uh, yeah, pretty iconic car. I think everybody knows Suki's S2000 or just at least they know it by the pink. S2000, too fast, too furious. Still in its original condition. And yeah, yeah, the nitrous buttons on the Sparco steering wheel. Pretty damn cool. What MC12 Corso on the road? What the hell? Oh, it's <gasps> pulling over. Oh, oh. some post quail traffic the mc12 corsa on the road and i had no idea but it's got a removable top how crazy is that wow that is unbelievable <laughs> with that the mirage gt pull up join the party look at that the blue and the red suits can you get any flyer than that having a mirage gt and a freaking mc12 corsa on the road i mean this is how you pull out style my friends that is just unbelievable and uh yeah nothing
nothing real legal about that, but who really cares? It's car week, anything goes. We gotta get the engine cover off the back of the MC12. Of course, now you can see that crazy V12. You got the induction coming in at the top there from that roof snorkel right behind your head. So you can hear that insane V12 revving that we just heard as it pulled off to the side of the road here. That is just unbelievable to see this thing outside of the road.